everybody, it's Bianca. So after the video that I shot last weekend on using my Hobonichi cousin for note taking, I got to really thinking about what kinds of examples there are out there on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest for the Hobonichi and how a lot of them really focus on art journaling or doodling or straight journaling, kind of brain dump stuff, all of which is fantastic and I do do that in a another Hobonichi. Um, but there aren't as many sort of straight planner examples that aren't really beautiful and um, or really cute. And I thought it might be helpful to sort of look at one that's a little more traditional and almost boring. For those of you that are interested in using the Hobonichi just as a straight planner and feel intimidated by the idea of having to do something with a lot of drawing or that's really artsy or whatever. So here we go. So this is my Hobonichi that I use for work. Um, I'm gonna bring it in so you can see the, the weave. It's the red linen weave. Um, I was really concerned when I ordered this that the fabric was gonna be stiff. I like things that are tactily pleasing and I was a little like, eh, the weave looked stiff to me, but it's actually not. It's very, very soft. Um, and it's held up really well to wear and tear. It gets thrown into my bag every day and it goes with me pretty much everywhere. Um, and it's not really gotten dirty, snagged, anything like that. So it's, for as soft as it is, it's it's a little trooper. Um, the one thing I will say about the zipper covers is that they are bigger than the traditional Hobonichi covers. So you can see it's a little wider and a little taller. This is the black leather. Um, cousin Hobonichi cover. But holding them both in my hands, the, the leather one is actually heavier than the zipper cover. Um, so if weight is a factor, I wouldn't be so concerned about that. Where I could see it being a problem is if you want to throw this in your purse and you don't have a purse that's big enough to fit this, then that could be a problem. But I kind of feel like the width and height thing is a fair trade-off for the enormous pocket that's in the back. And then you also get an additional mesh pocket on the back part of the cover. And there is the outside pocket. And then you also have the card pockets and stuff in the front, which all of them have. So the pockets were one of the big sells for me on this because I seem to accumulate a lot of paper detritus during the day. Um, <laughs> my faculty are big fans of leaving me post-it notes places. And I kind of like having a place to put all of that so that it's not just like falling out and I'm not raining post-it notes everywhere I go. Um, and then I don't have to worry about losing things because it's down in the pocket and then it's zipped closed. Um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of the pocket. I wish they made more of these. If you're listening, Hobonichi, you should make more zipper covers uh, in this size. <laughs> Um, one of the complaints I've read a lot on Facebook is about the little bookmark thingies. Um, people complain that they get caught in the zipper. Now, I personally have never had a problem with it, but I've read enough complaints to believe that it is a serious issue sometimes. When I zip it closed, I tend to just sort of like push them down a little and then... And I almost always zip it closed upside down. I don't know why, but I think it does help. Where I ran into problems with the bookmarks is with the um, rivet band bookmark. I had that in my previous cover, and I really loved having all the extra bookmarks, but it gets caught like crazy in the zipper cover. It's just a non-starter. Like, don't even try it. It's a mess. So I had to give it up. But it's a fair trade-off for all the pockets. It's just my opinion. Um, if you need the bookmarks more than you need the pockets, then the zipper cover probably is not for you. All right, so let's take a look. So this is a very typical, this is a, this is a day in the life for me. Let me see, make sure it's like in focus here. Doo, doo, doo. Okay. So what I tend to do in my planner is when I'm planning the day, which is normally um, in the evening, I plan the next day. I start by drawing the line along the, the timeline portion of the daily page. Now, a lot of people don't actually use this as the timeline. They just sort of write in it. I like using this as the timeline. And my logic is this. I put what actually happens in my day as opposed to what was supposed to happen in my day in the timeline. So stuff goes in here in real time. So I draw the line the night before, but then nothing gets put in there. 
uh, it's completely blank. And then as I'm going through my day and things are happening, then I start putting them in. I do use the weeks view in this, put it up here. but this is all stuff that was supposed to happen, like when it was scheduled. And this is how it really happened. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergies today. So this kind of helps me track where my time is actually going as opposed to where my time was supposed to be going uh, because often there's a big difference. And then the other major part of my day is the to-do list, which is here. And you can see it's done in different colors and there's a reason for that. Those of you that watch my video on note-taking probably figured out I like color coding for things. I like the sort of visual organization of it. But for me, where this has really been helpful is I use green is work and I use four, actually four different shades of green for different work things, depending upon if it's a meeting or if I'm teaching a class or if it's something that needs to be done in the studio, that sort of thing. Um, and then I have other colors for personal stuff, like going to the grocery store and doing laundry and, you know, whatever else, reading a book, you know, whatever else is on my to-do list for personal stuff. This makes my daily tasks feel a lot less overwhelming because when I'm at work, I don't look at stuff that isn't in green. I just skip right over it. And when I'm at home, I try not to look at the stuff that's in green. It doesn't always work, but most of the time I try not to read anything that's in green when I'm off of work for the day. This kind of helps me achieve a better work-life balance. The other thing that you can probably see that I do here, I've got some red stars. So at the end of the day, when I start planning the next day, I red star anything that didn't get done. And um, I like the, the red because it shows up really brightly. And this helps me kind of visually to see, okay, I didn't get these three things done and they need to be done. They have to go on the next day. And then at the end of every week on Friday, I go back through my entire previous week and look at all the red stars to make sure that everything either got moved forward on the list that hasn't been done or has been taken care of. Because I think it's really easy to say, I'm going to do this tomorrow and then copy it over and then still not do it or forget about it or whatever. So it's kind of an extra catch for me so that I don't forget things that I was supposed to get done that didn't get done, which pretty much happens all the time. Um, then the bottom half you can see I use for note taking in meetings. I pretty much have a meeting every day that I have to go to and I kind of like having everything all together. Um, makes it easier for me to find. Most of my meetings are pre-planned like every third Wednesday, every other Tuesday, that kind of thing. So when I'm needing to go back and look for notes, it makes it very easy for me to find. And then I use the yearly view to kind of index everything as well makes it a little bit faster. So beyond that, the only real sort of like decorative thing that I do in my planner Hobonichi is I use pretty much every day two stickers. One is for medication because I have uh, medication that I take every day and I try to track that. And then the other is a lot of times I'll put a little um, Hobonichi sticker of a Hobonichi down here that's when I do my planning time. Um, and this is really more of a, because I plan at the end of every day, this is sort of my like, yay, I made it through the day, <laughs> like <laughs> little celebration sticker. Um, sometimes I run out of space and then it doesn't go in. But most of the time I have like a little kind of happy planner sticker in there. As far as accessories that I use in my planner on a regular basis, um, the biggest one that I use all the time is this. It's the stencil from the Hobonichi site. It's the green stencil. It is incredibly helpful. I love because it has all these little boxes in here for to-dos, which you could see my to-dos were enormous. And it's designed on like a grid that fits right onto the Hobonichi paper. So you line the boxes up so they fit right inside the square, which is very anal, I know, but I love how it looks. And then I also use this, the bar on the side, for my daily timeline, and these for putting in stuff on the timeline, so everything is kind of nice and neat and visually pleasing. And then the star that's on here I use as well for those red stars when something doesn't get done. And I've used a lot of the other symbols as well, um, 
the dotted lines can be helpful for separating out if I have more than one meeting during a day so that the notes aren't all running together. Um, so if you're going to buy one of the Hobonichi stencils, this is the one that I would buy if you're a planner. This is incredibly helpful. As far as pens go, um, when I first started keeping my planner, I used the Copic Multiliner pens, which I absolutely love. They're fantastic pens. Um, I use them when I draw. I use them all the time. The problem was that I was taking them with me to work and people would borrow a pen and it would never quite make its way back to me. <laughs> So what happens when you take art pens to an art school? <laughs> so I pretty much came to the conclusion that they had to stop going to work with me because I started out with like 15 and wound up with like six at one point. So I went on this quest to find a pen to I could take to work and not worry about. And where I started was with the, the Pilot Friction um, Erasable Gel Pen. Now, these I was really attracted to because I liked the idea of being able to erase something, especially if I had a meeting that was put in at three and it got bumped back to four that I could like erase it and it would be all neat. But I soon figured out that the tips on these, they're 0.7 and it doesn't fit inside the stencil, which was really bugging me, but I was trying to power through because um, the colors were pretty and they do write very nice and they erase. But then I saw this video of this woman who had done all this writing in her Hobonichi and then it had been exposed to heat, which is what erases the ink, and everything went away. And she tried putting it in the freezer, which supposedly brings the ink back, but it didn't work. It was just this grayed out mess. Ugh. And it terrified me because I thought, oh God, what happens if I leave my Hobonichi sitting on top of my laptop, which I actually do quite a lot, and it gets hot and all my notes go away. It really freaked me out. So between that and the points not fitting into the stencil, I pretty much was like, okay, back to the drawing board. So I finally hit upon using the, um, the Stabilo. These are a 0.4 tip. So small enough to fit inside the stencil, big plus. They come in a ton of colors, so it gave me a lot of options for my color coding, which I loved also big plus. And they're sold open stock a lot of places like Dick Blick. So if one of them goes away, walks off, or gets lost, it's not going to be the end of the world. I can just go replace them, and it's not expensive at all, really, to replace them in open stock. So huge plus. So this is what I use now for my daily planning. I would say the only drawback to these is they're not waterproof. But I've never had an issue with my planner getting wet because it's in a zipper cover. Even when I've taken it out into the rain, the cousin itself stays dry. And I've never really dumped coffee or anything on my planner. But if you're really paranoid about that, then the Stabilo probably would not be the best bet, uh, for which I'm sorry. But I really like them. They write very smoothly and um, lots of pretty colors. So the other thing that I use, like I said, is I have these stickers that I drew myself. So I illustrated these myself and then I scanned them in and printed them out and cut them out using my cutting machine, which I think I'm probably going to do a video on in another couple of weeks just so that everybody can see what that process looks like, how to do it in case you want to make your own stickers. I like having my own illustrated stickers. I am an illustrator, so uh, it's kind of nice to have that tiny personal touch in my work planner to make it not feel quite so rigid and boring. Um, and it's easy to kind of just stick them in there every day. Like I said, I try to track my medication and I have one for a Hobonichi and then I have a third one that's a coffee cup because I went through a spell where I was drinking a lot of coffee and I was trying to cut back. Um, so I was using that to track my coffee. And when I have the time, I colorize the stickers, I paint them by hand. Uh, a word of warning, I have used both the Avery paper and the um, Silhouette sticker paper, which I think is basically the same thing. And they do not take watercolor markers or regular watercolors or uh, Copic markers well at all. It's just a mess. It either won't blend or it bleeds. Um, I just, it was a very long kind of trial and error process for me to figure out what I could do to put color on them. And I finally hit upon using the Derwent um, ink tense pencils. These color onto the sticker paper really nicely and they blend when they're when you wet it with a paintbrush and they tend not to bleed either. So your lines stay crisp, your colors 
look nice. Um, so if you're interested in kind of coloring your own stickers, I would go the the ink tense route. It seems to be the the simplest and um, prettiest way to do it. But there are days, obviously, when I don't have the time to color them in, and they just stay black and white. So that's pretty much everything. Uh, pretty straightforward, I think. If you have any questions at all, or want to see other examples of other pages, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment box, shoot me a Facebook message, whatever works. I'm always happy to post more. Have a good day.